All right, guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. So today's video, I have a number of fruits that I would like to pick for you guys. We're gonna go around my, uh, actually only really my potted fig tree orchard today. The reason for that is that a lot of my in-ground figs are ripening right now, but the birds or squirrels or something is getting to them. And uh, they're kind of leaving the potted figs alone. So I've been enjoying a lot of the fruits off of these uh, unless I net the trees, it seems like I'm struggling to, to ripen the fruits or enjoy the fruits. Uh, but they've been ripening now for quite a bit. And uh, I've been enjoying things like Rondé Bordeaux, Little Ruby, LSU Huye, Moro de Caneva, Neruccio de Elba is ripening now. So there's a lot of fruits that are doing well in the in-ground fig tree orchard. And I hope to give you guys an update on that. But for right now, we're picking out what I would argue is just some very impressive fruits. We're gonna do a video on these very impressive varieties, I think, or some that are, in my mind, somewhat impressive so far. And we're gonna evaluate them and kind of compare them side by side, because why not, right? Um, I've really been able to enjoy some really high quality fruits earlier in the season, but in the last three weeks it's been quite rainy and it's been difficult to ripen high quality figs. Uh, I've been dealing with the ants quite a bit. There's been some bird damage here and there. We've just had a lot of issues um, that are just not ideal but um, the season I think is going to really turn up a notch very soon. It's going to get cold or at least a little cold very soon. Uh, and if it gets colder, the quality is definitely going to drop, and that's not ideal. There's so many fruits, there's so much to do in my life that it just becomes very difficult. But, you know, I'm trying my best right now. This year is, it's been tough, like I said. So I really need to get rid of these ants. I need to put some Tanglefoot down and just demolish them, which uh, would do it. I have a perfectly ripe Smith, like doesn't get any better. Even have a Paradiso Bowed here. So these are some really impressive figs. It's now September, it's still the first week in September, but we're, you know, next week, September 15th, that's when things start to turn into fall. And as I said, when that happens, it's just not good for these fruits and the quality of these fruits. But that's a pretty impressive haul today. Um, pretty good genetic diversity here, I must say. A lot of ants you can see crawling on that plate, even on my hands right now. And I feel like I'm obligated in a sense to really document these. Um, what I'd like to do is start off with this particular fruit here because honestly, I, there's so many ants in here by the way. I have ripened quite a few of these so far this season. This is Paradiso from Bode in France. The problem is with it is it split every single time so far. This fig just always splits. I mean, it's just like a guarantee, basically. Even if it's totally dry, it's so crazy. But it's been relatively dry here, even though Ida came through and ruined a lot of things. This fruit really deserves its own video. It deserves to be in a lot of people's collections. Um, it is a extremely highly flavored fig and it probably is the best. It's right along there with the best figs I grow. And I would argue actually, it's probably uh, in my top five at least. Let me zoom in. So the awesomeness of this fig really just has to be experienced with the texture. You know, it's all about the texture with this one. It's very reminiscent of a Col de Dom. Very high quality fig. The flavor is also great. The sugar content's great. Everything about it is like pretty much perfect. It produces well too, other than the fact it splits. So this is a fig that you're in a dry climate you should be growing this fig. 
yeah. It's very, very good. Um, it's just a shame because I live here. <laughs> this is where I live. This is where I'm growing figs in the Philadelphia area and it's just too much rain. There's too many problems with the fruits that don't really do well with that rain. And because it splits so often, it does ferment quite often. Let me try this one here. This is Princessa. I've been eating this one for quite a bit. And I really noticed that this one was super ripe today. And I was hoping actually that it would turn a bit, um, a bit red on the inside because that's kind of what it's supposed to do when it gets a bit more mature. A little bit of mold down at the bottom there. But it really, to be honest with you, uh, this is a pretty decent performer for a honey fig. And I actually like it quite a bit. This is Pons's, one of Pons's favorite figs. He recommends this a lot to people. And uh, I can see why. I think it's got some good commercial potential. I think um, really a lot more people should just be growing it or paying attention to it. Yeah, I mean, it's up there with the best of the honey figs in terms of flavor. It's quite big. I really like the pulp on it. The texture is actually quite jammy. I'm a fan. I really wish these ants weren't crawling all over me. Someone getting freaked out right now by all the ants. I said it in the other video, but if you're gonna grow figs at home, you're gonna eat ants. All right, on that note, let's try another honey fig. This is Moscatel Bronco. Well, this one's not right. We're not even gonna bother with that. This one here is new. I'm very excited for this one. It's called Nin V, and uh, I really should plant this in the ground. I should plant this tree right in the ground. Because if you see here, it's got a long stem, a long neck, and the bottom isn't, isn't that round. I mean, it is a little flat, but the fact that it, it hangs like this really helps it shed water, and this fig probably wouldn't split very often. This, I imagine, is a very good fig. And you know what? It does remind me, just looking at it, reminds me a lot of like something like a... Is this it right here or is that it? Yeah, it's this tree right here. So it reminds me a lot of like a Golden Celeste. It really looks like LSU Huye or LSU Champagne. Actually, I have some LSU Champagne ri ripening now as well that I probably should go look at those trees and even some Stallion and Villa de Marseille. I wonder, I wonder if the, uh, something didn't get those fruits. So this is interesting to say the least. Like this fruit visually looks, oh my God, but it's red on the inside. Wow. <laughs> this guys is a this is a this is a great find. Let me tell you. You have no idea. This is a very good find. I can tell just by looking at it because this is like I said, it looks a lot like a golden celeste. It looks a lot like a fig that would do super well in a humid climate. Long stem, long neck, right? It's got the shape but it's not a honey fig. This is like a berry, a berry version of Golden Celeste. LSU Huye, LSU Champagne. Found in nature, not bread. This isn't a bread fig. Yeah, it doesn't taste like a honey fig to me. Huh, wow. 
super impressive variety. Hold, let me show you guys the tree too. I'm gonna plant this tree in the ground. Wow, I was not, I was not expecting this at all from this variety. Um, here's actually the figs on the tree. Quite a few on this young tree. And it didn't really get established that well at the beginning of this season. It took a while. Even last year, this is a two-year-old tree from cutting. You can see now that I've pinched it a bunch of times and got it to really grow finally. It started to be a lot healthier, the growth. It does have a little bit of FMV, but nothing crazy. Not like some, some varieties. Here's the leaf pattern. It looks nothing like a Celeste. It looks nothing like an LSU Huye. And uh, the fruits are perfect in shape. Wow. And the flavor is good. That's a, that's a winner here, guys. Just discovering new winners. That was the first one I've ever tried off of that fig. So, yeah, I'm impressed. Um, this here, we, we've already talked about this in a separate video, but this is called Salato. And uh, this is also a new variety to me, so keeping on that same theme. New variety, very impressive. I ripened a lot of fruits. It checks all the boxes. And because it checked all the boxes, I actually planted it in the ground before even tasting it. But now that I've tasted it, it's even better. And this fruit's just ridiculous. It's a very, very good tasting fig. I'd say it's probably better than the one I just had. The one I just had isn't as ripe as this. So I wonder. Oh yeah. In fact, it's pretty much almost as good as this Paradiso from both. Yeah. The problem is the Paradiso from Bo, if I had the right climate, it'd be a better tasting fig. But in their current states of ripeness, they're right on par. All right, let's do the Smith. This is going to be mind-blowingly good. I mean, this thing's like basically dried up. The ants are in here, but this is a dried, almost like a dried Smith. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second, guys. Oh my god, this looks ridiculous. <laughs> let me show you guys the uh <laughs> let me do a reveal here. Alright, here's the outside. You can see just how dried how the ants kind of got to it a little bit there in different spots. The cracks. But it's kind of dried. And then here's the inside. Boy, oh boy, is that super dark red. And it just is pooling with honey. That's really, really, really dark red. That's like a ruby red. Wow. Well, guys, you want to ripen high quality fruits, you better listen to me. Because you ain't doing this if you have the wrong practices. You live here, you don't live in the perfect fig climate, you want to have the experience of this. It's not enough to just grow the variety. You got to have the right practices, guys. It's really that simple. We don't want to be over watering our fruits, our, our trees. A lot of people get these big trees very quickly and that's great. Uh, a lot of people, you know, see a big fig tree and they think, oh, that's awesome. You don't want a big fig tree. You want the tree every year to grow very slowly. The more it grows, the more fruits it's going to produce, which is great. You want to have more fruits? That's your thing, right? But they ain't going to be as good as this. I'll promise you that um, there is no, pretty much there is no debating that. Oh, my God. Guys, it's probably, you 
in terms of just flavor alone, because it, it, the texture is not perfect what I like. It's not as thick as I like. It's very syrupy this time around. I think when the temperature is cooled down, the figs get a bit more syrupy and juicy. And then when the temperatures are warmer, uh, the figs tend to be a bit more drier on the inside and they have a thicker texture to them. But that was easily, I think, the best flavored fig I've ever had. Well, maybe not ever, but this year. Let's just say this year. Yeah, and it's not even close. It's not even close. Smith is just like out of this world good, guys. It's just the truth. This is, by the way, I have different sources of Smith, and some people believe there's different strains of Smith. This one comes from, uh, this is a Becknell. I think it's a Becknell source, but I know it comes from a guy named um, LaPlante, his last name is. I think his name is Matthew LaPlante. And I believe he got his tree from Becknell, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I also have the, the trees or the varieties, the Smith source from Just Fruits and Exotics. And those trees are younger, but they produce still very high quality fruits. So I would be, honestly, I don't see any difference in the strain just yet. And I don't think I will. So anyone really you know, saying that, oh, their strain's better or whatever the hell it is. It's just not true. They're all the same. They all perform the same so far. Um, it's just that this one here is like perfectly ripened. Now, this one's so well ripened that it has a cherry flavor to it. There's an acidity to it. And it tastes like cherries to me. All right, let's try this one because this one I know is going to be impressive. This is Sultane. It's one of the best tasting figs I have as well. It's one of the best performing figs I have. The ants got to this one. I have two of them. There are, a lot of them are ripening right now, actually. It's, they're a little waterlogged, it looks like, so not ideal, not perfect to the quality I know that they can be, but they stand up to the rain. This fig got through Hurricane Ida and a lot of rain that we've had. I mean, we've probably had like four inches of rain in a very short amount of time. It's one of the best, I've been trying to tell you guys this, it's one of the best figs. Performs very well, produces well, grows well. I have this one in the ground. It's just called Cull Noir by a different name. Um, as far as I can tell, they're basically the same fig. Very good. A little watered down, as I said. That one's much better. A bit more ripe. It's a little watered down because you can tell, you can, I can visually see it, is the exterior of the pulp is a bit translucent in color. Especially down there, see that kind of down there in the bottom left? It's sort of red towards the center and then as it goes toward, out towards the exterior, the edges of the fig, it's quite translucent. And when it has that translucent color to it, I guess that's a decent way to describe it, it's translucent, but um, that's when you know that it's, uh, it's got a little bit of too much water that has basically been absorbed into the fruit. It's not like, you know, it was too much moisture in the soil. It's, it's really a lot, of, a lot of that has to do with the rain hitting the fruits, yeah. So here's a Black Celeste. This is the this is the gem. I mean, this fig is just a friggin' gem. Look at this thing. Every single time, it has this amazing dark pigmentation to it. Every fig I've ripened this year, for the most part, and when it's ripe, consistently gets this awesome. 
purple dark pigmentation to it. It's a very beautiful fig. I, it's probably the most, it is the most beautiful fig I have inside and out. Hmm. That's good. It's quite good. It does really well in the rain and it dries well. It's just a chant, honestly. Here's little Ruby. Let's see if this is even edible. I think it is, but I'm gonna cut off the bottom just in case there's mold or something. Little Ruby is uh, really, it tastes quite good. I mean, I was shocked to find this out. It doesn't perform well because it has a very open eye. But this is a very figgy piece of fruit, like super dried fruit flavor like a raisin, a date, a dried fig. Extremely good. A bunch of dead ants in here. They get in this fruit very easily. Yeah. Holy crap. It actually was very good. You know what's weird is that this this fig has pretty much the most flavor. It's right up there with Smith in terms of just how much flavor it has. So it doesn't get enough credit in that sense in the flavor department. It's like a burst of flavor, I'm telling you. It's very good. Underrated. I, I gave it a 4.3, I've given it a 4.0, I've given it a 4.4, but that one was probably like a 4.6, a like a 4.7. Very good, very, very good piece of fruit. I also have a Regatta Rosa A here that is just not, it's not ripe. It, it tends to split very easily, very often. I'll take a bite. This is a highly flavored fig. Ah, it's very good. This fig, since its inception, since its formation, I mean, that's just a testament to how dry it's been recently. The fig had split because it rained. And then it um, kept ripening in the drier weather. And it was able to withstand the temptation, I guess, to ferment. And it didn't ferment even though the fig was split open down here at the bottom. And I have been waiting for a while to get one that's perfect, just like this Paradiso Ciro or the Paradiso Bow to talk about it, do a video on it. Because this fig is very similar in that sense, is that difficult to get one perfectly ripe to then talk about and give you guys an honest review. Um, but if I get one that is perfect, I know that it's gonna be a very highly flavored fig. It's really very it's a very very good fig so for anyone out there lives in a drier place doesn't mind the splitting and really the figs probably won't split this is a very very good choice um you could tell even though it's not perfectly ripe it is ripe and there's a portion of it here that has just been exposed to the outside elements this whole time, it's still very, very good. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy, guys. I don't know about you. I ate my, ate my, uh, <laughs> a bunch of varieties, different genetics, different types of fibers, different types of antioxidants, different nutrients, different flavors, textures. I love it. That's why we do this, for that awesome experience, growing all these crazy varieties and all these crazy figs. Do you have to do something like that? No. You wanna try an interest, something different, something interesting? Then yeah, you should grow some different varieties. So we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. This is a good week, I think, to get these, uh, this video out. And I probably, if it stays a bit dry, it's supposed to rain tonight. But after tonight, if it stays dry, I probably can do another video, more videos like this, where I have a lot of fruits at one time. 
We haven't been doing that much this year. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Check out our blog, figboss.com. You got this far, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.